George Foreman, what a pleasure it is to see you, sir. Russell is glad. I'm happy to see you, too, and I don't have to fight you. <laughs> <laughs> I'd just be running around the ring going, ring the bell, ring the bell, ring the bell, come uh, on. <laughs> oh, man. Well, George, I, I enjoyed the movie. I mean, you know, obviously had heard about all the stories, you know, even starting way back when you first got into the boxing and all that. What's it like for you to sit in the audience and watch this, saying, this is my story? Boy, Chris Davis, the guy who did the scenes of George Foreman, played George Foreman, yeah. what a job. He had me on the edge of my seats. Uh, my seat even made me cry a few times with the punching power he had. And then Doc Brodus with Forrest Whitaker, the trainer who never gave up on me. Boy, it was a, really a journey back through life. I shed a few tears watching that movie. I, I can imagine, because, you know, like you said, especially with Doc, uh, you know, that was a good person to come into your life at the time he did. Because, like you said, if you hadn't gotten involved with him, learning how to box, Lord knows. But, you know, hey, thank goodness it went this way, and everybody now all around the world knows who you are. <laughs> yeah, we all need someone in our lives that believe in us. I found Doc Brodus. He never gave up. He always believed in me. It made all the difference in the world. Oh, yeah. And, and one other thing that just kind of really stuck out, even though it's been more than 50 years now, anytime any of us see somebody, you know, in a movie or a fight or whatever, go down, everybody always says, down goes Frazier, <laughs> down goes Frazier. <laughs> and it's like, and to hear it in the movie, it's like, oh, man, that was it, you know, back in the day with Howard Cosell. Most unbelievable moment in my life because... Joe Frazier was truly the giant slayer. He went out and no matter how big the guys were, it looked like the bigger they are, they were saying, the harder we fail. I stood up to Joe Frazier. I was afraid of him. The only time I'd gotten into the ring, I was afraid of someone. I knocked him down out of pure fa uh, fear. <laughs> I was afraid. I could imagine that. And then one thing it even said at the end, obviously you and Ali you know, had your things going, but how at the end of his life, you guys were good friends who talked all the time. I made the most wonderful, long-lasting friendship I had in Muhammad Ali. We talked on the telephone, and then they had the advent of the camera on the phone. We mm -hmm. watched each other. He boasted about how many grandkids he had. I never could catch up with him, he thought. He always wanted to win. Uh, I got five. You only have four. I have five. We <laughs> boast about that. I love that guy. To this day, I've never forgotten the love I had for him. And, and that is so great because it makes me think, I'm a friend with Tommy Hearns, and Tommy says hello to you. And obviously he and Sugar Ray always had their big battles going. They talk every day. Love each other. <laughs> I've seen that. I've seen that, and I love that. But Muhammad Ali, what a joker to the end. Once <laughs> I asked him, I said, Mick, look, man, I want a rematch. He said, you crazy. I said, but how is your wife? She crazy. <laughs> <laughs> we laugh. We found something to laugh about all the time. That is so great. George, thank you so very, very much for your time. Always been a fan and going to make sure Detroiters get out and see this movie, man. Thank, thank you, you so, so much. much. Hi, Forrest. How are you? Good. How you doing? Good. Good to see you. And also great seeing you in this movie, too. I mean, we've all, you know, grew up with the George Foreman story. Yeah. And now you're a what was that like for you? I mean, I'm, I'm quite sure as a little kid, you were the same way, just looking at Georgia now, boom, you're part of his story. I mean, it's exciting. It was exciting to tell his story because as a kid, you know, I've, I've watched, you know, the, the boxing championships a lot throughout time, but this period that this movie takes place in was the one I remember the most. Uh, I remember uh, George Foreman, Frazier, you know, Ali. It was a whole different kind of thing. And even Kenny Norton coming in. And um, so it was exciting to get a chance to, be a part of that and to contribute in some way. And you just made me think, uh, you know, even though it was 50 years ago when he fought Frazier, everybody to this day still uses that famous line when they see somebody go down, down goes Frazier, down <laughs> goes Frazier. And it's like, yeah. whoa. Howard, that was another thing that was exciting about it because the, the banter between Muhammad Ali and Howard Cosell was like something that I would watch. I remember as a kid, it's kind of inspiring because I'd never seen a, I see I'd never seen a black guy like, talking like that on screen and television, you know, and, and it turning into like a, his, his platform, you know, it was pretty amazing at the time. And also, speaking of amazing, even the story, I mean, you know, we all know it's true, but 
I don't think anybody could have written anything, you know, <laughs> comparable to this and have people go, okay, I believe it. You know, about this guy who's a champion, then winds up losing things, gets into religion and, you know, winds up coming back and becoming a champ at age 45. My goodness. Yeah, that's like, it's hard to imagine. Like, I think that's what's great about the film is it, it like shows you the potentiality we all have that you can overcome anything, you know, in this case, he overcame poverty, he overcame uh, basically violence and destruction, and probably his own incarceration because of his behavior, and like ended up being like the heavyweight champion of the world and double time over while in, while in the middle of that, becoming a preacher and speaking the word of God, you know, it's pretty amazing. And, and even like your character, I mean, it goes to show that we all need, you know, someone in our life who's going to be there per se at the right time to get us going in the right direction. So, I mean, that was fabulous. Yeah, I mean, I think there's a somewhat of a father-son relationship in a way, you know, a mentor relationship where he's like really trying to guide George. He sees a potentiality in him that I don't think at first he sees in himself. And um, he is able to like move him along to be able to, to reach these goals, these incomprehensible goals, you know, the Olympics and the whole thing. No, that's for sure. And, and at any time during filming, did you ever think, I just want to get in the ring myself, just for a moment, just to see what it feels like. <laughs> no, you know what, Chris? Chris was working so hard, and those guys were working so hard. Uh, I think when you see the film, you see Chris's boxing, but you also see his physical transformation and stuff. And I was like, just like there to support that. I wasn't thinking about getting in the ring with those youngsters. <laughs> I'm right there with you. Same. <laughs> it's kind of like it looked good from where I was sitting watching. Yeah. But uh, yeah, then it's like, nope, that time's passed. <laughs> yeah. But. Oh, but Forrest, thank you as always. Uh, like I said, really enjoyed the movie and uh, make sure Detroiters get out there and watch it because we're a boxing town. All right. Good to see you. Hey, how well, you doing? Good. How are you? I'm doing great. Great. Well, welcome and uh, enjoyed your movie very, very much. And you're the director and one of the co-writers. And this almost had to be, I, I don't know how you came across it, but once you saw it, it's like, duh. Yeah. <laughs> I got it. I got to do this. Yes, exactly. I mean, that came, you know, George Foreman. I mean, uh, just that name means so much in boxing, one of the top four or five historical fights he was in. And on top of that, the ideal of the comeback story of a guy 20 years later can win and can be wearing the same trunks that he wore the night that he lost to Ali. These things you can't make up. Um, but most of all, it's the journey, man. The journey of a great a man who became a great man, who started off one way and changed became another. So you got everything that you really needed in terms of human experience, but also boxing and sports. So I was excited as a director, and, I, and it, was, it was a wonderful ride. I, I can imagine. And also, you know, you've got to find a guy who can embody George and, you know, do him really well. So talk a little bit about Chris being in this movie. I mean, he did an excellent job. Yeah, Chris was amazing, you know. And early on, when I first saw him, I saw him in a picture. The first thing I saw was a picture of him playing Jack Johnson on, on stage at the Lincoln Center over in New York. And he had the body, he had the size, he had a bald head, just like Jack Johnson. I was like, that's George Foreman right there, like the, the later George Foreman. Um, and then when I saw him live in person, he was 6'4". And he had the body. I'm like, wow, you got the body to play younger and to gain the weight. Um, and he was amazing in his chemistry read. He was the guy right from the beginning. I knew that was there. And I matched him up right away with Sullivan Jones, who played Ali. So I put them together early on. But what's the major thing I love is the commitment. It had to have a commitment because we made it through and in and out of the pandemic. We had to yeah. stop. We had to continue. He kept on his regiment. He kept dedicated, learning how to fight, also learning the choreography of these real fights. We really try to get into the real areas, the real corners, the real punches, um, everything. And there's a lot of fights in our movie that's very exciting. So that dedication, you need somebody who has the will. Right. And like you said, yeah, I recognize a lot of the, you know, when I say choreography from the real fight, and it's like, okay, this is going to come, and it comes, and it's like, there that's it is. There it is. You saw the the, the knockdown, the eight round knockdown in Ali, right? That that knockdown. Right. We did that forty two times to get that right, you know, just to make sure. And we doing uh, real punches, you know. Is is one thing too as a filmmaker, you know, you see it and you see the misses, you know. Right. Uh, I I just didn't want to do that. I just felt like you know, just get some real boxers and let's do it. And we did it carefully. No one got hurt. Um, but it feels like how do I feel? How do I distinguish seventy boxing? 
from today. And that's what we really, it was a very unique time as I talked to George, what it's like. Everybody fought everybody then. Nobody yeah. dodged anybody. <laughs> so I feel like I can't run. I got to try to be as authentic, authentic as I can as well. That's for sure. And, and one thing I, I just even have to bring up to you, like at the end, you know, it was talking about where the people are and, you know, different stories. And about how at the end, George and Muhammad Ali became dear friends talking to each other, you know, pretty much every day. And it's kind of like here in Detroit, Tommy Hearns and Sugar Ray Leonard, you know, always had these great battles. Those two guys are on the phone like two or three times a day, which, you know, it's, it's just kind of, you know, different <laughs> to think about. It's like you beat each other up, but now, hey, you're each other's best buddy. Yeah, that's something. that got to be something in, back in the times, man. It's like Joe Frazier and I remember seeing uh, those guys on a tour together, you know, these yeah. guys hanging out and talking about Kenny Norton. Um, and this is something to respect. These guys, they fought, but they respected one another. And I think that goes with the movie when George says, you know, I used to fight with this, but now I fight with this. It's a different mindset. And I think those guys really respected each other. And it becomes very inspiring for me just as an individual, just to see that. Right. And also, it's another one of those things where, you know, young people will see it and hopefully enjoy it. And also, they'll have a mentor in their life, like Forrest Whitaker's character wise. So, yeah. Yeah, how great. I mean, that's a, such a great character. There was always, you know, when I first talked to George, I always thought from the outside that Archie Moore was that guy. Archie Moore was his, he was there a lot, left, came back, defensive, fought Ali as well. And he was like, no, it was Doc Brodus, which was an amazing character because he's been there from the beginning. Well, how amazing a guy could be 17 and 0 and had to stop boxing for the war. And, and helping people, that mentorship was very important. So those are the great things that I learned from George, just for prepping, you know, prepping for the movie. Absolutely. George, thank you so much. Enjoy the film. We'll make sure Detroiters get out there and check it out. Uh, thank you. Thank you very much. What's going Chris, on, Greg? You? I'm good, man. How are you? Doing well. Good to see you. Good to see you too, man. And guys, see, enjoy seeing you in this movie. Thank you, brother. Uh, had the moves, did everything, you know, everything looked great. But I've got to ask as an actor, and I'm quite sure it's a daunting task to play someone, you know, who was real, uh, you know, had really walked on this earth. But talk a little bit about playing some guy who is as big as life, who you know is going to be sitting in the audience watching the movie. Um, I mean, it, again, you know it's a huge responsibility playing someone who is real, was real, but, you know, Mr. Foreman can watch the film. He can walk up on set anytime he wants to. So when I got the role... Uh, rather immediately, I knew the responsibility that I had because, you know, sure, you want the fans to be like, oh, that's exactly how he fought. Or I remember when he was doing the commercials like that, and it's easy to mess up because he's such a specific character of an individual, right, throughout the many parts of his life. So you have that responsibility, and then it was like, well, there's his friends and family, and you want them to watch it and be like, yeah, that's, that's you, that's you, you did that. You know what I mean? And you want him to feel like his story is being told mm -hmm. with authenticity, that it's being respected, and it's being honored. So, you know, uh, all of that added some level of pressure, but for me, I put it all into the work, and I just wanted to leave no stone unturned so that I can say, hey, I did everything that I possibly could, win, lose, or draw. I gotta say, even talking to George and both Georges, mm -hmm. the director as well as Foreman, I think you had the knockout punch. No, excellent job. Thank excellent you, job. Enjoyed watching you, you know, do that. Plus, also, he had even told me about, you know, like a lot of times when you see a boxing movie, it's kind of like choreographed, where you know you take the thing like that and then misses and all like that. George told me he actually had you guys out there, really kind of duking it out. <laughs> well, well, it was it was our choice to mm -hmm. to take it there. Um, George had a, had a vision, mm -hmm. right? And his vision for the fights would not allow the um, standard way of filming fights to work, mm -hmm. which I think was fantastic because it gave us another opportunity to further authenticate mm -hmm. what Mr. Foreman was experiencing in the ring, and not just Mr. Foreman, what all fighters experience and sacrifice in the ring. So we as a fight team came to an agreement that we were just going to go there. So yeah, we, during these sequences, we're throwing real blows. Those body shots that I'm giving Ali, 
were real. I mean, the extras were like, oh, you know, they were, oh, yeah. you know, Sullivan took some body shots. When Ali is throwing them, them ones and twos and tagging me in my face, the audience was going crazy, you know, um, because we wanted to authenticate it. We, this is a huge legacy to tell. So yeah, we, we decided it was better to just go there. And George Tillman found his, um, his corner of that. And he called, uh, what do you call them? Special. He wanted to do specials, right? Where it's these special shots where we would have to do certain impacts um, several times, like that. Those last several punches where Ali knocks Foreman out, and you know I hit the ground. You know, we did those punches like 15 times, man. So I got punched in my face like 45 times. Oh, jeez. Okay. Gosh. Yeah. Okay. You deserve a break. <laughs> Go up and enjoy. But thank uh, you so very much for this and your performance. Fabulous. No doubt. Thank you, so thank you brother. Bye. Take care. You too. Bye-bye.